Well, fact time. My name is Mark, welcome back to the shop, and today we're looking at this again because there was an awful lot of comments and there's a lot of things that I need to kind of explain. Engineering explained. Um, so, a lot of people say, well, my CNC machine or a CNC machine could easily cut that out. <laughs> Show me, good luck with that. Um, no, it's not that the geometry is the problem. So if you haven't seen the original video, go and watch that now so all this makes sense. Um, but basically, in one of the major reasons of the problems with this was trying to manufacture this helical cam malarkey. Um, so, with this setup, you have this shape. Fucking Nora. This shape and this shape. Like, well, if you'd be good if you could see. And you can see there's a helix and it's a knob. Um, you know, and people are saying stuff like, well, you could just, you know, you, you could just CNC machine that. Right. Let's get this straight. Camshafts have to be hard. The surface of these camshafts have to be hard. No, not soft. Hard plastic edges. Hard! Hard plastic edges. Oops. Right, and if you look at a video like this, it shows you cam grinding. And what they do is they basically forge or cast the camshaft shape oversized. And then what they do is they go in with a grinding wheel that rotates the cam and they basically have a follower that follows the cam profile this is like the golden sample the master sample you know the pattern sample that's what i'm looking for the profile sample and all the camshafts should come off exactly the same why do they do it this way well because like i say these surfaces so these surfaces that rub against fingers buckets whatever you want have to be hard they have to be have a hard surface this reduces wear and stuff like that. If you just used a billet piece of steel they would gall and just wreck themselves in no time. A lot of it's case hardening, usually induction hardening, so they put them through a coil, heat out the, basically the heat from the outside so it heats up so much and then they quench it. Um, they quench it and sometimes temper it, depends on the alloy, blah 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 blah, to make these surfaces hard wearing. Absolutely fantastic. Here's a BMW camshaft and these surfaces will be hardened like you wouldn't fucking believe it. And you can actually see it. Maybe I should get a picture of that. But you can see where the, the steel colour, you see from the inside, fags in the way, inside there, you can see that the colour's different to this outside. This has been induction hardened, and so, same as this bearing surface. This is to stop it basically wearing out prematurely. So what they do is they cast or forge blanks and then they what they do is they grind them. Why do we do grinding? Because abrasives, aluminium oxide, zirconia, stuff like that, even diamond wheels, these are harder than the hardened steel. So a fight between the steel surface and the actual abrasive wheel, the abrasive wheel wins. And bingo, away you go. The other thing is as well is abrasive wheels are really fucking cheap. Um, you know, and why do you have to do it this way? Why do you have to harden it and then machine the profile onto it? And grinding, you know, it's, it's a machining process. Why do you have to do that? If you cast this, machine this to the perfect size, right, CNC or not, then went and, and basically heated this up and then quenched it, you are not going to end up with the same size material it is not it basically expands and then contracts and goes all over the place now it's hard it's hard and out of um the specs it's out of the tolerances it's a funky shape it's all over the place this is why hardening swords on blades and stuff like that you harden it and then you grind it afterwards so you get your finished dimension now people say well you can machine you, you can machine harden things but it is a fucking nightmare on your tools they don't last very long
and they don't last long at all. Even tungsten carbide, or tungsten, uh, what is it, Kunstein carbide, car glide, whatever it is, whatever it says. They don't last long whatsoever. And camshafts are rather cheap. Sorry, I'm just walking off. Camshafts are rather cheap, so you want to keep this process cheap. And here lies the problem. If you machine this profile and then hardened it, these surfaces would have to be hardened and all around the outside would have to be hardened. Your machining was just a complete waste of time and then you've got to try and grind it. Grinding this outer profile is piss easy. You do it in exactly the same way. You stick it between centres, you turn it and it just grinds that profile on there. Not a problem, you just basically lock this in like this. It'd grind all this and it'd grind all this because it just follows the cam profile. It's these surfaces here that are a helix that is a, a split line that basically moves, it moves out of plane. It's a helix and that is the problem because these surfaces also have to be ground and have to be perfect. If there's any gap this camshaft will basically jitter and rock around if there's any gap in between there. I've got some gap in this for this 3D model you can see. If that starts happening things are going to turn to shit. If one of these edges curls over it's going to jam in there and then when it tries to move it's going to jam and lock up. So these surfaces have to be basically either ground or you use EDM, so basically, not EDM, a wire eroding which is a type of EDM and stuff and basically you'd start your wire there and you'd slowly rotate the part as your wire passes up and that will basically leave this awesome finish. EDM and wire eroding stuff like that, you can do this to harden parts. Um, but that costs shitloads and takes loads of time compared to normal camshaft production. The other thing is as well is, even when you do that, it has to be spot on. If these surfaces aren't spot on, they will bind. So they have to be spot on. The other thing is, this is the worst one. This is the worst culprit. Because here... You can't do your, your normal wire eroding bullshit because there's a bloody shaft in the way. That's the problem. Now, it wouldn't look exactly like this. This is just for the model. But you still have this kind of flank here because this has to basically rotate around that. Now, people might say, well, why can't you just make this as a separate part and then just bolt it on? <laughs> That's not going to last long. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. This needs to be as rigid and as strong as it can be. To survive the life, it's more about life. So could you CNC machine this? Yes. Can you CNC machine this out of hardened stuff? Good fucking luck with that. And, like I say, it will kill your tooling. Solid carbide tooling will literally... You'd probably... You'd wreck an end mill just doing not even a can. You know, you are going to be changing your tooling like you would fucking believe. An abrasive wheel mass manufacturing costs $10, $20, something like that. End mills... For good ones, $80 per end mill, and you're going to wreck two or three of them trying to just do one set of cams. It is just not viable, and that is the problem. It is a beautiful design. Now, sintered powdered metal stuff and all the rest of it. Yes, you can make the form, but again, you just have to grind it. And the problem is, is grinding these surfaces, you just simply can't get at. You simply can't grind that surface like that. It would be extremely hard with a curved disc to grind this kind of profile in it. It's just ridiculously hard to accomplish and that is the main problem. You know, there's a lot of people in the comments say, oh, you could, yeah, a CNC machine could do that. CNC machines have their limitations. A CNC machine is there to basically replace a lathe and a milling machine depending on the CNC machine. And in a sense that is the problem can you do this on a lathe manually and a, a you know a mill yes you could but you couldn't you can't do that stop in there this is where stuff like edm wire eroding stuff like that and this is where surface grinding and radial grinding and stuff like that 
you know, they each have the processes. A standard camshaft is, you know, there are machining processes done to it and all the rest of it, drilling holes and all this kind of the, all this kind of rubbish. But then they are always ground at the end of it. Same with valve seats, stuff like that. A lot of things are ground crankshafts, you know, their main journals and their uh, crank pins, you know, rod journals, stuff like that. They're all ground, stuff like that. It's how you basically attack hardened material because the abrasive disc is a loss. It's a loss process. Basically, that disc is slowly being abraded away as well. But as soon as it... And they have systems in place to not just true the wheel... So it's not just like using a diamond tip where you true a wheel. Um, but not only that, is they have laser inter interferometry that basically makes sure that the edge of the disc is exactly where they think it is. They also have sensors on the actual disc so they can tell, the, so they can measure the tool pressure, or the grinding disc pressure and stuff like that. So they basically make sure that these discs are cutting because as they wear away, they're going to remove less and less material if everything was static. So, you know, your CNC machine could make this profile. Would it last long in an engine? No, it wouldn't because it hasn't been hardened. Can you machine harden stuff? Yes, you can, but it wrecks your tooling. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.